I want to do some teaching with this. And I, for this service, I really want to come from the angle of redemptive righteousness because righteousness and justice, like we've been talking about, are interchangeable, right? So really what all we're doing is digging a little bit deeper into justice, um, and we're going to view it through the lens of righteousness, if you will. But this entire series, this is our seventh week here, we have been teaching about justice and judgment and how that Hebrew word for judgment is mispah. This thing is about a decision that we make, right? It's a position that we take, but it's also, it's a, it's, it's a rule of law, if you will, and it's binding for both parties. So judgment and justice are actually how the Lord runs his throne. We, we see that in Psalms chapter 89, verse 14, where it tells us that justice and righteousness are the habitation of the throne of God. And, and God rules from the throne of God with justice, with judgment. And so these things have been important to us. Today, we're going to unpack three principles, right? And those three principles are we have to believe the right thing. We have to do the right thing and say the right thing. I won't get to all of them this service, but next service, we'll make sure that we get through them all. But this is going to be a, a broad idea of believe the right thing, do the right thing, and say the right thing. Because the right thing, if you will, is, is a broad view of justice. Justice is also doing the right thing. Yeah, so we'll make sure that we discuss that. But watch this. Justice is not a matter of, of law or grace in terms of has it been abolished. So we don't talk about justice in terms of, oh, that's the, under the law or this is under the covenant. We continue to do justice even though this is a New Testament and Old Testament principle because it's the very nature of God. It actually has nothing to do with grace or the law, per se, in that way. It's the very nature of God. Doing the right thing is actually who God is. Making just rulings is who God is. We laying some foundation. I'm telling you, stick with me. Because the, the Bible says in Proverbs 21 and 3, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. So this thing is high up. On the list of God. Amen. So now watch this. Um, we've been talking about uh, uh, justice and judgment. Now watch this. To, to, to do the right thing, if you will, or to make a proper ruling, that's justice. But if God himself, right, does right by us, that's justice. If, if we or God don't make the right decision, that's injustice. If God does not punish, hello, or if there is no justice rendered, it's not injustice, it's mercy. So if God fail or, or choose not to make a certain decision or a certain ruling, he's not unjust. We're going to unpack that today as well. The difference between these things, he's showing us mercy. Jesus. So watch this. Um, I always, every time I stand before you, I want to present to you the gospel. I am a gospel preacher. In fact, um, coming up October 31st uh, will be 507 years since uh, the Reformation where uh, Martin Luther placed what we know as 95 Theses on the Roman Catholic's door. And he did this because he was upset that the Roman Catholic Church had started um, dealing with indulgences, which is you could pay to have your sins removed. And he, he was upset with this, so he decided that he was going to write these 95 theses, put this on their doorstep, and he wanted to break away from the Catholic Church in Germany because they were teaching this. And he was, he was fed up because he says, you cannot buy your righteousness. And so Martin Luther, he was quoted saying that 
Every week I taught my church the gospel because every week they seem to forget. Because there is power in the gospel and recognizing that we cannot pay for what God has already paid for. So now watch this. While I'm laying this foundation of righteousness, because righteousness is bottled up in what the gospel is, what is the gospel? The gospel, if you want to simply, it's the good news of God. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of God. But it's also the understanding that the most terrifying and the most beautiful truth in Scripture are both the same thing. And that's that God is good. That's the most terrifying thing in the scripture. That's also the most beautiful thing in the scripture, that God is good. And what does a good God do with the not so good people? He must execute justice. He must pour his wrath out on a not so good people if the nature of this good God is good. And in the fallen state of man, we're no longer good. He must execute justice and judgment. And so God. God has decided that in the person of Jesus Christ is where the, where the execution of justice will fall. And we have been discussing um, Genesis where we're looking at Abraham because God says, I know him, that he will teach his household how to do justice and judgment. In other words, he will teach his household how to be like God because he, we have to do the right thing. And so this is so important because if we don't understand, if we don't understand justice, right, under, that's interchangeable with righteousness, then we won't understand when we get to the next service. We won't even understand how we, how, how we handle justice and judgment. Do you understand? This thing is just foundation. Now listen to me. We, justice through righteousness. There, there, is a, there are four Greek words that I want to point out to you today, right? It's diakosuni. This is the righteousness that God gives us. In other words, he puts credit in our account. We receive this through faith, but we, he put credit in our account. I, I can recall uh, my oldest son, Caden. He said, Daddy, on our way home, uh, can we stop and get juice? I said, sure, we can stop and get some juice. So Asia placed her order and Alea placed their order. And so now we have a whole thing. We got to go in the store and get all these drinks. And so we get to the counter and Caden says, Daddy, don't worry, I could pay for it. <laughs> I says, oh, yeah. And he goes in his pocket and he pulls out about $3 and some change. <laughs> One of y'all gave it to him, Amen. <laughs> He pulls out about $3 and some change, and the man says, it's going to be about $9.80 something. I said, son, you don't have enough money. He said, oh, well, dad, can you put yours back? I said, put yours back. You don't, you don't have the money. <laughs> but I told him, daddy would take care of it, right? I'm going to pay for it. I didn't expect you to pay for it, but the truth is, son, you can't pay for it because you'll always come up short. In fact, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, says the only thing we can pay for is death. We can only pay for, it says the wages of sin is death. We can pay for death through sin. We also get paid for our sin and the payment of death. But you and I cannot pay for righteousness. It has to be given to us. It's a gift of God. That's eternal life in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Y'all see this? So this is that word. This is the, the, the righteousness that God gives to us. He credits our account with this thing. And then it's dakayo. And this is where God. Now watch this. Some of what we've been dealing with are, are lightly touching on the, uh, the course of heaven. This is where God turns. Right. And he says to all of the angels, to everyone, they are righteous. They have received righteousness by faith. Because they believe in me and what I have done on the cross, I, I have declared them righteous. 
So one we receive by grace, one we receive by faith. Now stick with me. I'm telling you, I'm laying some foundation. And then the other one is the kaios. And this speaks to our identity. God calls us just. Let me break that down a little bit more. We are, we're no longer identified by what we have done or who we are. We are now identified by the justice and the righteousness of God. In other words, though I'm a sinner, I am not identified as a sinner. I have passed from, from darkness to light, from death to life. I'm no longer identified as a sinner, so God calls me righteous. Y'all sticking with me? This last one here is diacoma. And this is works that align with the righteousness we have received. So what this, this thing can be a puzzle here because the Bible says that, that, that sin, right, is actually a ruler. Sin is a ruler. And so this thing, watch this. Some people, they get uncomfortable with certain doctrines of grace because they believe it's a license for sin. And Paul says that should we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Heavens, no. However, these things are true that God no longer looks at us a certain way. But watch this. This, this right here is really where we have been focusing on and where we've been getting justice because these are the things that we do out of a response of what we understand. We understand where we stand with God, so we do good works out of a response of that. Good works is not what makes us righteous. Good works is a response of being justified. And so this thing right here says, um, because the Lord is just and the nature of God is just, he'll do the right thing, so I'll do the right thing. And, and this is what we've been focusing in on here about um, things like hearing both sides of the story. The, the just thing to do is always to hear both sides of a story. Before we make any decision... Before we make any ruling, it's always right to hear both sides of the story. Can I submit something to you? God did this since the beginning of time. Genesis chapter 3, if you pay attention to it, he says, Adam, where art thou? Yeah, yeah, he did. He knew what Adam had done, but he allowed Adam to plead his case. Watch what Adam did. He says, it's the woman that you gave me. God turned to her and said, what happened? It's the just nature of God that's hearing both sides of the story. And this is what I mean. Because God will do this, this is the righteousness that we carry out because this is who he is. So we in turn will hear both sides of the story. And watch this. I love this about this, this account because what happens was God allowed Adam to plead his case. He allowed Eve to plead her case because there was an accusation against her. But then this is what he did. He went to the serpent and he said, because you have done this, I'm going to curse you. What are you saying, pastor? I'm saying that the just nature of God hears the creation of God. He hears humanity, but he puts up with none of Satan's tricks, his schemes, or his scandals. So we ought to hear each other out. We ought not to hear what the devil got to say. Yeah. We ought to, do you hear what I said? We ought to hear each other out. We, not, we need not hear what the enemy has to say. He does not get an opportunity to ever plead his case in our lives. The just nature of God is allowing you and I to plead our case to one another, but letting Satan have no voice. He is the automatic. Listen, the Bible says that what he'll do is he'll. St I'm trying to move on, but I'm stuck here. The Bible says what he'll do is he'll go to you and, and he'll accuse God. And then he'll go to God and then he'll accuse you. So if we're not careful, what we can do is we can start to allow his accusations to be heard. 
And accus- I told you last week, accusations are necessary for the plan of the enemy. Right? Accusations are necessary for the plan of the enemy. Watch this. As long as there is law, then the enemy has accusation. If there is no law, then the enemy has nothing to accuse you of. So the accusation of the enemy is written through the scriptures of God. Because he understands, Pastor Blunt, that you are counted righteous. Because he understands that you are counted righteous, his accusation is against your righteousness in Christ Jesus. So he, what he's doing through his accusation is he's actually testifying for you that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Because if he was not able to accuse your righteousness, that means it would not be there. So the devil has a very distinct understanding of what God has done. Ooh, this is big. Now watch this. I told you last week that the enemy, he needs a body, he needs a mouth, he needs a tongue. He can't create anything. But he can accuse. So in his accusation... What he's doing is he's not creating something. He's taking it and twisting it. So he's saying, um, even though the Lord Jesus Christ has died for you on the cross, he has rose for you. He has paid the penalty of sin. He is saying that your righteousness is based on your works now. So what happens is. Even though I told you good works is a response of the justice and the righteousness of God, now what he would do is he'll put our focus on works-based Christianity and works-based gospel. Stick with me. He'll make everything about what we do and never about who God is and who we are. What do I mean by that? He'll make everything about what we do. See, The Bible has already told us that there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. But what these accusations do is they come to condemn us. And this is what the enemy knows. If you you are living in condemnation, you're not effective. Because when we call for you to pray for intercession, you won't show up. You're sick, you're busy, you got a headache. And it's not that you're not capable. It's not that you're not anointed to pray. It's that you're living in condemnation. Because you have believed and received the accusation. And so it makes you ineffective. And so what the enemy is doing right here with your righteousness is he is making, he's taking it and saying, it's in your hands. Your righteousness is in your hands. It has everything to do with you. Nothing to do with what Jesus has done for you. This is just. So watch this. We, we spoke about this other one, right? Uh, Diakosuni, where the Lord credits to us righteousness. Now, I, I, I love this because I'm a banker. And, and here's one thing that I realize. Credits are a result of debits. They, I mean, they offset something that has come out. Or they're, they're the positive to the negative. That's what that means. They're the positive to the negative. And they have offset something that have come out. They are the positive to the negative. So when I'm looking at my bank's balance sheet, I'm, I'm interested in, in our financials, but the, the very first line that I look at is the bottom that says totals. Because as long as that one is net positive, Kendrick is doing well at work. But what I have discovered is that I have never seen a balance sheet for my financial institution that did not have a negative, that we did not pay for something, that there was no cost associated with operation. There is always cost associated with operating. 
So when, when I'm looking at the balance sheet, the thing that I'm looking at is uh, now that I'm counting the cost to operate, it is going to cost me something. But what I'm looking for is understanding that I'm counting the cost. I still come out net positive. But here's what I also realized. The other day I got paid. I had two things in front of me, Pastor Blunt. I had the financials and I had my check stub. I realized that what they pay me, right, it does, it's not a reflection of what has something that costs the bank. If the bank has to pay for the light bill, that don't come out of my check. The, the bank is paying for this. This is their cost of operation. And because I'm working in the company, because I'm on the salary, and they said that they will give me this amount of money, I receive this amount of money. But what, what's not happening is them docking my pay because of operational costs. And the devil, as tricky as he is, when the storms of life come upon us, these things are operational costs. They come with operating in the kingdom of God. Yes, you're going to have to sow. Yes, you're going to have to cry. Yes, you're going to have to go through hard times, but you still come out net positive because of the work that Jesus has done. He does not, watch this, he does not subtract from your righteousness because there are costs for operating in the kingdom of God. That would be unjust of God because he made you. He made the world. So it, watch this. He also made trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God made trouble. We're talking about righteousness. We still own justice and judgment. The Lord himself made trouble. And he told his disciples, he says, listen, it, it, you're going to go through things. Test, trials, tribulations. They're going to come. They're going to beat on your house. The wind's going to come. The rain's going to, the wind's going to blow. It's going to beat up on your house. He is telling them that there is operational costs for living inside of the kingdom of God. And what the devil wants us to do is call God unjust and focus on the operational cost. Not realizing that through the blood of Jesus, we are net positive on the balance sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, even though it's costly, it don't cost you anything. Jesus. And, and watch this. What happens, what happens is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about my notes. I don't go on full go on banker now. What happens is, when the accusation comes, see, there's something that happens when people come inside the bank. And they tell me they want money. I tell them, you have to fill out a withdrawal slip. That's right. Not just that. I need you to sign for it. I also need your ID. I need your identification, and I need your signature. Because in order for you to take something out, I need proof that it's you requesting the debit. I need to verify that you want to take this out. So all withdrawals must be verified. All accusations, watch this, they must be verified. But here's what I love about the banking system. In order to bless someone, you just need enough information about them. So if you come into the bank I, and you want to make a deposit, I all of a sudden don't need your ID. I all of a sudden don't need to verify who you are. You just need to put it in the right account. Because the deposit, watch this, the deposit is sure. And it's not taking away from the account. So when he says that Abraham, watch this, Romans chapter 5, it says that God accounted to Abraham righteousness. That means he deposited 
into the life of Abraham righteousness and he did not even identify the sins in his life or the things that he would do that's costly to the operating in the kingdom of God. I'm giving you some revelation right now. Because, and, and here's the other thing. It, it takes, ooh, it takes power in order for, for, for there, now if there's a mistake at the bank, it takes power in order for there to be a correction. Also, if the debit is too big, what does that be from operational costs, right? Or, or from a person that's withdrawing, if the amount is too large, my team can handle it up to $50,000, then Kendrick got to step in. Because every withdrawal of that magnitude has to be verified by me. Because it's on me if something goes wrong. It's, I said it's on me if something goes wrong. Because I have been placed, watch this, to, to manage this banking facility. So if I fail to do my due diligence, when a person is making a large withdrawal, I have to stop it if I think it's fraud or, or if I realize this person don't have the money. But really, they, they do that because fraud is in place. And, and, and there's fraudulent items and there's fraudulent people that... When they realize that a person have a million dollars or have much money, they start to say, we can just take 50000 from them, and they'll never know. Yeah, they'll never know. And so what happens is I realized that we went through a season where wire fraud was at an all-time high. And that folks were just sending money, sending money, sending money, sending money, and not realizing that they were being scammed. So I sit down with this gentleman and I say, who are you sending the money to? He says, I'm sending the money to um, the title company. I says, what title company? He says, for my mortgage. I say, wait a minute. I thought you said you paid your home off. Don't you have the deed? Don't you have the title? Yeah, I do, but they said I got to get a copy of it. Why you got to get a copy of it if you have the original in your file? So I said, what's happening here is they're draining you of what you think you need to pay. And so now, you, I said, if you're not careful, you're going to look up and everything you have is going to be wiped out because you already paid for the title and the deed. The moment you made the last payment on that mortgage, it's yours now. And you, you can get a copy, but it don't cost this. So what the enemy will do, watch this, we re I told you we receive this through faith and grace. What the enemy will do, will do if we don't understand that Jesus has paid this, he will keep us in condemnation based upon our works. It's still our responsibility to do the right thing. We're going to get into that next service. I'm running out of time here, but I'm telling you what he would do is he would drain you. He'll run you to nothing. And, and tell you, okay, um, you showed up on Sunday, but you missed Bible study. You're not saved. There's no way that the Lord love you. Yeah. You're going to give to Kenya and Sierra Leone and your children hungry? Condemnation, accusation. What he's doing is he's robbing you of faith. And now you can't receive righteousness. The enemy is shrewd. Um, how much time do I have? Let me break this down. We have to understand that the, the way that the enemy operates, right, is in the spiritual realm. God is a spirit. The enemy operates in the spiritual realm. These things, they're in the spiritual realm, a realm we can't see. Go back last week, we talked about Balance, and we have one foot in two realms. The enemy operates in the spiritual realm. What you and I have to understand is that we have to receive this righteousness by faith. That there has been a righteousness given by grace. We have to receive it by faith. So now watch this. When, when our spirit don't understand this, 
is not effective in our lives. There is nothing in, in your Christian walk that if the spirit is not, if the spirit is not involved, it's not effective. I'm going to say it again. Anything in your Christian life, any decision you make, any money you sow, any words you say, if the spirit of God is not involved, it's not effective. You hear what I'm saying? The spirit is not involved. It's not effective. Did you know that even your own Bible, it's just a dead book if the spirit of God. See, because I went through this crisis in my life, right? The moment I heard some crazy doctrine in college, I went through this shaky season because I had never heard this stuff, Minister Ronda. Never heard some of this stuff. But what I realized is that I was listening to the voice of people that were historians, not necessarily theolo and theologians, but they were not necessarily Christian. They did not have the spirit of God. And so to them, it's a book of knowledge. It's a, it's a book of history. It's how they find monuments and stones. But to the believer, watch this, when we are in the spirit, to the believer, it's the power of God. So they say that the Bible claims that Jesus died for you. The Bible claims that God is just. That the Bible claims. They, they literally teach the scriptures in college based on what the Bible claims. But when we are in the spirit, we live based upon what the word has declared. And that thing comes alive in us. And it's the reason why they never receive revelation because revelation comes from them that carry it out. It's one of my favorite scriptures. You'll hear me quote it all the time. Matthew's gospel chapter 16 G and 13. Jesus was coming off the coast of Caesarea Philippi and he asked his disciples, do you recognize who I am or I'm a mere man? He says, what do men say that I am? And they had claimed him to be a scholar and a prophet. Jeremiah, Elijah, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. And he says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the, not the dead, the son of the living God, not the son of the God that used to be alive, the son of the living God. He looked at Peter, he said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. This only came by revelation and this came from the father that's in heaven. He had to reveal this to you because it's only by revelation that you can get the understanding that even though God is just and he must execute justice on fallen man that he has given you grace and righteousness. It's only by revelation that you understand that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Only by revelation. So what am I saying to you? What does this have to do with justice and judgment? I noticed something. I, I told you guys a few weeks ago that I, I had a moment with my son. I had to pick him up from school because he had got into some trouble. This is real life stuff I'm telling you about. And I went home and it, something else had occurred and I said, Asia, Man, I don't know what to do. And I said, what we need to do is hear what's going on with him. What's happening in his spirit. Before I make a decision, I need to hear what's happening in his spirit. Right? So he had done something wrong. I should have punished him. But first, I need to hear what's going on in his spirit. Where is he? Adam, where art thou? Where, art thou? where is my son? And he talked to me, and I said, Asia, hey, give me an hour. Let me talk to God. And I got up from the prayer room, and I was a frustrated parent. And I said, Caden, come here. The Bible says in this book and this verse, don't forget it. Remember it. Okay? Go and play. And Asia's looking at me like, what? What just happened? That's a big deal. I said, yeah, but the Lord told me to give him a word. And she's like, uh, that's a big deal because that thing is, he should be in trouble. I said, no, 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 I'm telling you. 
I'm, I'm so resolved in my spirit because I talked to the Lord. He said, just give him a scripture and ask him about it every day. Every day I go, Caden, what does it say? And he tells me, amen, praise God. It's getting inside his spirit. But now this is the reason why the Lord, I believe, was, or, or did that. He was trying to show me something. He says, Kendrick, what, what you saw was some, that something he did was unjust. And in your nature as a parent, you wanted to bring justice to the situation. But what I'm telling you is do nothing. Because in your doing nothing, even though you know he's wrong, even though you want to get with him, do nothing because that's mercy. I'm calling you to show him mercy so you can only watch this you can only make this decision because you live your life in the spirit and the Lord started to minister to me because your righteousness is just like this you did something wrong I should do something about it but instead I sent my word to you and God has sent his Word. He has balanced the scales to do justice in our lives. So if there is something that has come upon us and we are the reason even why it came, we still can say the right thing and declare of the word of the Lord and mercy will take the seat of punishment. And it's not God being unjust. It's him showing mercy. So, I said, okay, Lord, make this make sense to me, right? Because the other side of this thing is judgment. Now, here is what I did not consider. Kendrick, you have to rule your house well. And ignorance is no excuse. However, it's your duty to teach your duty to teach your son to do the right thing. Because it's my duty to teach my son to do the right thing. That's just and honorable before the eyes of God. I'm going to have to close this up here and we'll get to this. Because now this is where we get into our core scripture. Where God is saying, I know Abraham. He's going to teach his sons how to do justice and judgment. But here is the reason I know for a fact that God says I know him because I know what I gave him. I gave him mercy when I should have given him a punishment. We'll walk through this. I should have punished Abraham, but I gave him mercy. And because I gave Abraham mercy, he understood the magnitude of it. And I know he will teach the same thing to his house. I know Abraham. The trick that the enemy plays with us is that somehow it's our duty and our responsibility to make ourselves righteous. It's our duty and our responsibility to balance the scales of entering into the rest of God in terms of making it into heaven based upon something that we do. And he wants to use operational cost of being a Christian to try to take away the justice of God. But God has already responded to the fallen nature of man by sending Jesus Christ to die. And we'll talk about this more next service, but he judged the body of sin. He judged sin in the flesh. So God poured out his judgment on Jesus. And the scale has already been balanced. There's already been a ruling that God has accounted you righteous and you have received this righteousness by faith. Therefore, you can't buy it. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. You do good as a response because of it. And what the enemy will do is he will make some of us, I mean, used less because we are carrying around the guilt and the shame of 
paying for our own righteousness. You don't have enough. You always come up short. You can't withdraw from a negative account. You don't have enough. So the enemy's job is to get you to a place where he gets you away from the nature of God because you don't even understand what God has given you. And he wants to lie. Watch this and I close. He wants to lie to you, child of God, and tell you everything that you have done, everything that you are going to do, you better offset it with good works. Yeah. Yeah. On one, on one side of the scale, we testify and we magnify God. Oh, we thank God that he brought me out of this, brought me out of this, brought me out of this, delivered me from this. And then on the other side of the scale, we say, Lord, had I never done that, I wouldn't even be in this position. Like, God, I'm just so, how can you even use me because I used to? And he is making us, he is taking us off the bench where we can't be magistrates because we don't feel qualified. This is the lie of the enemy. Stand to your feet, people of God.